We are live. I think we're live. We just went live. Yes, I was just making sure my audience knows I always test all these uh, places to make sure we're, we're all over the place. But welcome, everyone. I have the most amazing guest this morning. If you don't know me, if this is your first time uh, logging in, I'm Cindy Williams, a travel career coach. And my purpose is, is to help motivate and inspire people to follow their bliss into abundance. And I have the most amazing guest to help us do that today. Hal Elrod, international best-selling author, is on a mission to elevate the consciousness of humanity one morning at a time. And I have to give you props, Hal. I want to go through a few stats. You're the author of one of the highest rated books in the world, The Miracle Morning. I have my copy. I read this a long time ago. We reread we re it. It's so great has been translated into 27 languages, has over 4,000 five-star ratings, which we know is not easy to do, and is practiced by over a half a million people, 70 countries. Wow, hell, welcome this morning. Thank you for having me, Cindy. This is, this is fun. It's so amazing. Before we get into talk, because we're going to dig in for our viewers, our viewers are always looking for motivation, inspiration. We have a lot of people who work from home, right? They're solopreneurs or they're running their businesses from home. So before we get into all the fun, juicy stuff, we always like to start, we, we work with travel communities. So we like to start by asking you about what is your best vacation you've ever taken in your life and why? Yeah, it's a, it's a tough question because, uh, right, different ways to measure what makes a best vacation. And the, parts, the vacation that I'm going to answer this with, my kids were not at. And that's where it's hard to say, well, was it really the <laughs> no best? Way. Because my kids weren't there. Um, and, uh, but it was uh, a few years ago, I got an email from my agent and said, hey, your French publisher would like to fly you out to Paris to do a media tour to promote the Miracle Morning. You know, would you be up for that? And I'm like, oh, yeah, but I can't go to Paris for my first time without bringing my wife. Can I bring my wife? Right. And, uh, and they said, sure. And then I was telling a friend of mine, you know, I just called a friend and I said, hey, we're going to Paris, you know, my publisher's flying me to Paris. He goes, are they going to fly you first class, like lay down beds? And I go, I doubt it. I, I don't know. He goes, I would ask. I go, man, I don't, I don't want to, I don't, you know, I'm, I'm grateful they're just going to bring me out. I don't want to push. He goes, never hurts to ask. They could say no, but they might say yes. I'm like, you're right. you're right. So after I'd already asked if they would fly my wife out there and put her up with me, I said, hey, uh, that, you know, emailing, would you? possible no if not okay and they said of course yeah you know and and so they flew us out first class like it was amazing and you know out to paris and it was a whirlwind where i had a team with me taking me from radio interview to tv interview to uh, just for two days and i had a translator with me the entire time with an earbud in so during which would made it really weird in the interview you know you get asked a question and then i would he would be telling and so i'd have to listen to the the, the the person interviewing me and smile and you know and then try to hear what they're saying while hearing what he's saying and he's sometimes kind of messing it you know he's trying to do his best and, and then I've got to answer without it being you know so it was it was just a wild experience and it ended with a book signing at a at the famous bookstore in Paris uh, and that was the coolest part was having hundreds of people stand in line with French accents saying your book uh, it changed my life and you know <laughs> And it's just so surreal to be across the world in another country, another language, right? And people telling me that this book that I wrote in my living room, right? I work from home too, um, made it overseas and it's changing lives around the world. So that's what made it the best vacation. What a beautiful experience. And you know what? Like, because we book travel so much, there is nothing that can replace that lay down seating, nothing. right? Like when you can sleep on the over, because it's always an overnight flight yeah. when you go that direction. Yeah. So it makes the difference in, we tell our clients like, yes, it's a few thousand more, but look, like you can have jet lag for like five days or you can like sleep on the flight yeah. over and reduce that pain and suffering on your, and so especially if your work, it's a, it's a, we call that a leisure, business and leisure vacation, right? Where you're doing some business and some leisure, so. Yeah, yeah. and, it's, and it, it does ruin you. It, once you go lay down, you can't ever fly overseas, sit, you, know, you know, once you see how wonderful it is to wake up rested okay. you know, I mean it's amazing or even into Hawaii even coming from here in Texas I know you're here in Austin too but it's like going to Hawaii is kind of like it's it's not that much more like to like get there refreshed and that whole thing so sure. but it's so funny because every week I my my audience knows I always have a coffee mug and usually we always ask our guests like 
where, you know, where's your favorite? Nine times out of 10, because I've been all over the world, I can pull a coffee mug. So in, um, <laughs> uh, beautiful. I love right? it. Right. So we have our Paris mug today. So uh, my nice. collection of hundreds of mugs. Uh -huh. We don't have bowls in our house. We just, we eat soup and salad out of mugs because we have mugs from all over the world. So awesome. Well, and I do want to get to Miracle Morning, but before we dig into that, I have to ask you about being hit head on by a drunk driver and dying for six minutes when you were 20. What happened and what did you learn from that? Yeah, I was, uh, obviously that kind of experience is something that you never imagined would happen to you, right? I mean, it's something you see it on the news and you're like, you feel for the family or the person that went through it and you change the channel and you're like, oh, thank God I can go to my normal life. And uh, when I was 20, I was in sales, I was selling Cutco uh, cutlery and I was one of their top sales reps, so I was always speaking at all of their events. And I spoke at one of their conferences, and afterwards, driving home that night in um, my first new car, I just bought a new Ford Mustang with my hard-earned sales commission money, you know? And uh, driving home that night, a, a man I'd never met before, a drunk driver, got on the freeway. He was in a big Chevy full-size truck, much larger than my little Ford Mustang. And he, I don't remember, you know, people ask me, you know, what, what happened? Did you swerve? Did you, what happened? You know, and I don't remember that night, really. Um, but this full-size Chevy truck came barreling down the highway at 70 to 80 miles an hour. I had my cruise control set at probably 70 miles an hour, you know, on the freeway. And he hit me head-on. And the worst was actually not from the, the head-on collision. So we hit head-on, and it sent my car spinning. And then the car behind me crashed into my door at 70 miles an hour. And so if anybody's listening or watching, right, look over your left shoulder and imagine a car hits you at 70 miles an hour in your door. And as you might imagine what, you know, what could happen, the entire left side of my car smashed into the left side of my body. And I instantly, the left side of my body was devastated. I broke 11 yeah. bones in a split second. I broke my leg, my femur broke in half. My pelvis was crushed between the center console, broken in three places, broke my arm in half, my, my uh, humerus behind the bicep, shattered my elbow, severed the nerve of my arm, crushed my eye socket. It's all made of metal now throughout. I've got metal rods in my arm, my leg, my eye, my elbow. Um, and I, I died for six minutes at the scene of the accident. I was clinically dead and stopped, you know, heart stopped beating. And I woke up from a coma six days later. I had flatlined two more times while I was in the coma. And when I came out of the coma, it was, you know, waking up going, oh, well, well, I'm so, you know, I was lethargic and I was in pain and I was in the hospital and I didn't understand why. And uh, I had to face this unimaginable reality. And the doctor said I would never walk again was probably the hardest thing to, you know, to process. And I think the greatest lesson that came out of this is that there's really two parts to it uh, or two or three, I guess, the way, depending on how you look at it. But it was, I made the decision to accept everything that I couldn't change. And this is the greatest lesson I've learned in my life, arguably, is that um, every negative emotion that we ever have felt in our lives or are feeling now or could ever feel has nothing to do with what's going on around us and everything to do with what's going on inside of us. In other words, it's our wishing and wanting that we could change something that's out of our control. It's our resistance to reality, in other words, our resistance to reality that determines the emotional pain that we feel. It's yeah. never the thing. We think, well, of course I'm upset. Look what happened. Well, no, 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 no. That same thing happened to somebody else and they accepted it and they, they were at peace with it because they couldn't change it. Mm. So it's, not, it's never the thing that we're pointing to that we think is causing the pain. It's always our resistance to the thing. And so I, I, I had that awareness through my Cutco training. I learned something called the five minute rule, which said when things go wrong, it's okay to be negative and feel bad or upset, but not for more than five minutes. There's no value in it, wishing you could change something and dwelling on it and putting negative emotional energy into it. And so literally in a matter of, you know, the, uh, you know, minutes or, I mean, you know, a day or so I went, I can't change that I was in a car accident. So I'm not going to wish that I could, if I never walk again, I'm going to be the happiest person you've ever met in a wheelchair because I'd be in a wheelchair either way. I could be miserable and yeah. blame my unhappiness on the fact that I can't walk, or I could be the happiest person that you've ever, again, that, 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 you know, that, that's in a wheelchair. And, and so I just, I really, I realized this and, and, and the doctors, I was, Cindy, I was so like, uh, like, just like this, I was like, Hey, everything's great. And the doctors thought I was delusional. They thought, they thought I was in denial because I was so happy. And they called my parents and they sat them down. They said, we're concerned with your, with Hal, his, his emotional state. We mm -hmm. think that he's in denial and he can't handle what's happened to him. He can't accept his new reality. Mm -hmm. And my dad came in and sat down and he said, Hey, 
the doctor said it, it's you're not acting normal you should be sad scared angry depressed these are the normal emotions that you should mm -hmm. be going through and they, they think that you're you're covering the emotions up pal how are you really feeling it's okay to feel these ways and I feel this way and I said dad I thought you knew me better than that I live my life by the five minute rule mm -hmm. it's okay to be negative but not for more than five minutes it's been two weeks since the car accident and I told him what I just told you, which is, that's the first time I said that is, I said, dad, if I'm in a wheelchair the rest of my life, I promise you, I'll be the happiest, mm -hmm. most genuinely grateful person that you've ever seen in a wheelchair because I've decided that I, whatever my life is from here on out, I'm going to appreciate every part of it, you know? And whether it's a car accident or it's losing our job or it's losing a loved one or it's just little things like, every, like traffic, Right. Well, we're in traffic. Yeah. We can go, well, I can be upset and stressed over this or I can be at peace with the fact that I can't change the speed of the cars in front of me. You know, it's this universal lesson that we can be free from emotional pain. I call it emotional invincibility. Mm. And we do that by consciously choosing to completely accept and be at peace with everything out of our control. Mm -hmm while we focus only on the things that are in our control. And, you know, and, and I think the, the part of that is being grateful for all of the things that we have while we accept all the things that we can't change and right. we work on changing the things that we can't. Yeah, absolutely. And I love the, so many times people give themselves a guilt trip or like I always tell like our clients who are working on that big mindset piece is you have to allow yourself to break down before you can break through, even if it's at five minutes or just, realize like this is where I'm at but like there does there's no good in like worrying about it getting stressed about it putting all the extra pressure or like the solopreneur thing we our audience struggles a lot with why can't I figure this out why can't I get there why can't I make whatever happen in my world so I love that kind of like sit in that place of acceptance and then I love that that's great so amazing amazing so when when you kind of your journey from there you did walk again so that's amazing and then so do you think that that having that mindset really helped you escalate that process of healing and attracting this you know uh recovery into your into your story yeah i i absolutely do and it's funny whenever i give my whenever i give a keynote speech and i tell the story and i tell kind of what i just talked about i say look i don't have a graph that shows how my bones healed in alignment with my positive attitude right like i don't i don't have that graph i just have a picture that one week after the doctors called my parents in and said we're concerned with how we think he's in denial you know he may never walk again and he should he needs to you know i'm sure he's covering up these emotions one week after I had that conversation with my dad, I said, dad, I'm at peace with whatever happens. And here's what I told my dad, by the way, this is an important part. I said, dad, there's only two options, in my opinion. Number one is the doctors are right and I'll never walk again. And that's when mm -hmm. I told him I'll, I'll be happy in a wheelchair. You know, yeah. that's my life. I said, but this, there is a second possibility, dad. And I don't know if it's even possible, but it is a possibility. And that is that I will walk again. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if, I don't know when, but I've accepted the worst case scenario, you know, mm -hmm. and of course you could probably think of a worser case scenario, but right. But I, I've accepted that I may never walk again. We'll call that the worst case scenario, but all of my energy now that I've accepted it and I'm at peace with it, I don't, mm -hmm. there's no, I don't worry about it. I don't even, I don't, yeah. there's no negative energy that goes into that. Yeah. I said, all my energy is focused on possibility. Number two, I imagine walking every day. I mm -hmm. visualize it. I think about it while simultaneously being at peace with it may not happen. I think that's a really hard thing for people to do. But yeah, the, the duality, right? Yeah, exactly. Because it's like, the more we want something, the more we have this mindset that it goes, well, if I don't get it, I'm going to be devastated. I'm mm -hmm. going to be so disappointed. It doesn't have to be that way. It could be like, I want this more than anything in the world, but I understand there are many different possibilities and, you know, things don't always go, you know, our expectations aren't always met. And a lot of times it's a good thing as Garth Brooks saying about in like the nineties, I think some of God's greatest gifts are unanswered prayers. Right. So mm -hmm. a lot of times something doesn't go right. And you're like, all right, maybe there's a, it's meant to be or whatever, yeah. but yeah, but, but so that's it. It's, it's, it's accepting what you can't change while you focus on energy on what you want simultaneously accepting mm -hmm. beforehand that it may or may not go according to plan and you just keep pivoting and adjusting. Yeah, that's the letting go and trusting process. Then and, and that is the hard, you are right. Like that's the hardest piece for people trying to, cause they push, push, push for something that they want, but 
getting in that place where I'm grateful for what I have today and everything is everything and reality is relative and every, it's going to be okay no matter what, I promise you. But here's what, I, so and where you put your energy is what I really firmly believe you attract in. Sure. So it's like, yeah, I'm here where I am now, it is what it is, but I have this vision and that's where the energy goes. And so where that, what shows up in your life, right? So I love it. That's amazing. Let, so let's talk about the miracle morning. I know everyone's like waiting, right? (laughs) This started as a best-selling book started. That was like its entry, right? Best-selling book became a worldwide really movement and it's practiced by over 500,000, half a million people a day are waking up with this, these secrets, this process that you teach. And I, did I hear right that they, they just made a movie about it? So yeah, I, I just, I produce, I, I'm the executive producer, whatever that means. Uh, that basically yeah. means you write the checks to, to right. <laughs> to know what they're doing. I don't know what I was doing. I was just like, oh, you're okay. You direct. Okay. You, you do the video, you do the audio, you do the set, right? Um, but so yeah, we just uh, finished a movie uh, or it's, it's, it's like this close to being done. It actually debuted in Sedona at the Illuminate Film Festival. It was one of the featured films, which is really cool. Um, and uh, we amazing. actually, it was, a, it was a night, not quite finished version that we got ready in time. And then, uh, the movie will, I don't know exactly when it'll debut, but it, yeah, it's a documentary. It follows my journey, um, and, uh, of, sh- you know, sharing the miracle morning. And then we go around the world and interview, uh, mostly in the U S actually, but we had, it went on the, that Paris trip. We were, the, my filmmaker yeah. was there following us around, but, uh, but we, we go around and interview uh, some world-class individuals from athletics to, you know, CEOs to authors and you name it um, about uh, their morning rituals and, and look at kind of go beyond the book and, and go even further. I love it. I love that so much. And one of the things like, because <laughs> I'm a firm believer, like they get that, some people call it our power. Yours goes way more in depth than that. But taking that time to set your intention for the day and getting yourself, like, when I launched my travel empire, the only way I could do it, because I had another business at the time, was working full time, was if I got up and did that hour before the kids got up, before my husband even got up, and had that time to do the things you talk about in this book. And that's why it happened so fast, because it's like, if you're dedicating that hour every day towards something you're working on, I love that. But what do we do for the people that are like, look, I'm not a morning person. What do you tell those people? Yeah. So that's what held me back for a lot of years from writing the book is I thought there is such a strong narrative in our head, such a, mm-hmm. and I really, it's a limiting belief that says I'm not a morning person because we've never been a morning person. And, and, and I, in a way, I blame that on our parents. Uh, not, not really. It's not, well, here's what I mean is that as kids, we're woken up against our will, right? Like very few of us are like, Hey mom, will you wake me up early so I can go to school? Right? No, every morning. I mean, if you have kids, right, it's that struggle, get out of bed. Right. And so because of that, we develop as, as, as we're young and our brains are forming this resistance and resentment to waking up early. And you think about it, I mean, what kid, if given the chance, won't sleep as long as they possibly can, right? Right. And so that's what happens our entire childhood. And then it gets even worse because we turn 18, maybe we leave, you know, we leave home. And now it's like, oh, I don't even have to wake. I can sleep. Like for me, I would stay up till five in the morning and play my first year of college. Yes. I would stay up till five in the morning, play video games, and then sleep till 10 and then go to school at 11. You know what I mean? Right. So it got even worse. And, um, and so that's why now I survey. So that was what held me back from writing the book is I thought, well, I don't, how am I going to break that narrative? And I just, I believed I, I kept sharing the miracle morning with one person at a time during a speech, this and that. And, and the results were how I wasn't a morning person before you taught me what you taught me. And now like I, I applied it. And the next day I became a morning person and it's like, it's changing my life faster than I ever thought possible. And yeah. because I kept hearing that, I went, I have a responsibility to share this with the world. I have to write this. But it took me three years to write the book mm-hmm. and get over my own insecurities and issues with, you know, is anyone going to read it? And, you know, what am I going to do? And, and a couple of years ago, um, someone asked me during an interview, what percentage of those, you know, and it wasn't half a million back then. It was probably 100,000 people doing it. Mm-hmm. But they said, what percentage of those people uh, were already morning people before they read the book? So it was easy. They just were like, oh, cool. I'm going to, instead of checking email in the morning, I'm going to do the miracle morning, you know, it'll, that, right. That sounds better. Um, and what percentage of them were not morning people. So it was a radical, like, Oh my gosh, I, I, I've never been a morning person. I don't know if I could do this. 
And I didn't know the answer. So I surveyed our community, which is in the you know, hundreds of thousands. And I was blown away. 72% said I had never been a morning person my entire life until I read the Miracle Morning and I applied the strategies, the process, et cetera. And there's an entire chapter that's the shortest chapter in the book. It's four pages. Yeah. It's called the five step snooze proof wake up strategy. Uh, it's for the recovering snoozeaholics. Uh, it's probably <laughs> the most important chapter in the book. It's the linchpin. It's literally those four pages teach you, even if you've never been a morning person, even if you believe you never could be a morning person, you've tried before, it's never worked. Those four pages teach you a simple five-step process to beat that snooze button. And, yeah. and, and it's funny because those were like, that, that, that almost didn't make it in the book. That was towards the end. And I believe if it wasn't for that little chapter I think people would be fired up on the miracle morning, like, wow, this could change my life, but they wouldn't know how to overcome that limiting belief that I'm not a morning person. So the, yeah. the, in short, if you're thinking I'm not a morning person, I don't know if, I don't even know if I want to be a morning person, join the club. I wasn't mm -hmm. a morning person and hundreds of thousands of people that now do this, they've said I was never in my life a morning person before, you know, I read the miracle morning. So. Yeah. And you know, what's crazy. So we do, um, we have a coaching program called careers on vacation. A lot of times we do free consulting calls to help people get clear on their goals. You know what the number one thing is that people tell us that when we say, what's your ideal day? Like, what would you like your perfect day to look like? Like eight out of 10 tell us, I just want to ease into my morning. Like they have that vision, but they haven't been able to like jump that gap of making that happen because what do we all do we get up and we're immediately like oh the kids need this and blah 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 and, or like you said you go right to email which if you're going to email you're kind of like a, a slave to your environment instead of like you setting the tone and setting your intentions and getting clear on what you need to accomplish like this is way back like 90s when they trained you on time management training right but it's like don't start with the email don't start with that what are you going to accomplish today and then you block the time for the whatever. But it's kind of like setting that. Um, so people want that, whether they know it or not. That's what they want. They want that time to get clear, that time to stay focused. And I think, like you said, try it. Join the club because the minute you start seeing the results within a couple weeks, the minute you start feeling better, the minute stuff starts changing and starts happening because of the small adjustment, we're talking one hour, like yeah. commit to it for a few weeks and watch what happens, right? So I love that. And I think this is such a great tool for, especially those people that tell us, right? Like, how do I do that? How do I make that happen? So you're the boss of your life, right? So <laughs> what do you, hell, what do you see for the future of, your community for the miracle morning. What's what's on the landscape coming up? Yeah, so that what's interesting. You you, you mentioned the community. So the, with the miracle morning, you know, it started as my morning practice. Then I made it into a book. You know, and I didn't expect it to be a movement. I didn't expect it to be a bestseller, let alone a movement, right? Um, and now probably the most beautiful part of the entire miracle morning, the book, what it gave birth to, is this global community and uh it the, the the home for the community is really a facebook group called the miracle morning community and uh right now we have 180,000 people in there from over 100 well over 100 countries and uh and i think like 300 new people join every day and it's all organic i don't run facebook ads they just read the book and then they come in mm -hmm. and um but it's the most beautiful loving human supportive group I've ever seen. Um, and not, and not just about like the miracle mornings, the focus, but I'll give you an example. We had a woman join, this was a, a while back, but this is my favorite, one of my favorite stories. And there's, you know, thousands of examples like this, but she said, Hey, I'm new to the group. She posted, she said, this is my first post. And I kind of feel bad that I'm about to ask for something from you guys when I've never contributed anything. She said, but I've been watching you lurking for a couple weeks now, and <laughs> I've never seen a more, you know, supportive, loving community the way you guys support each other. And she said, my husband's going in for open heart surgery tomorrow. And I'm mm. terrified of, you know, the worst case scenario and what can happen. And mm. I don't know where else to turn. I don't, I don't have a circle of influence of people that are really evolved and conscious and, and loving and, and supportive. And uh, I would just, any thoughts or prayers, I would really, really, really appreciate. It would mean so much. And in 24 hours, less than 24 hours, she had 983 comments on her post of people wow. saying they were praying for her husband. Now, again, this woman 
was a str- no one knew who she was. Mm-hmm. But this is the culture of the Miracle Morning community. And the mission, I think you might have, I don't know if you mentioned this or not, but my mission in, in this world is to elevate the consciousness of humanity one morning at a time, one person at a time. Yeah. And it's not, th- I, you know, I might have started it, but it's this community. Exactly. And it's when you wake up every day and you dedicate that first part of the day, whether it's 30 minutes or an hour to your miracle morning, you're elevating your own consciousness that mm-hmm. elevates the consciousness of every person that you come in contact with through your influence. Yeah. And then that elevates the consciousness of humanity. And the future of that is, uh, well, the most recent thing we announced it yesterday in the Facebook group, you can actually go watch this video. If you join the miracle morning community is we, we do a live event once a year. We're actually doing it next month in San Diego. It's, it's sold out best year ever, uh, live.com. It's the best year ever live event. And it's, that's the most intimate aspect of our community, right? Of the 180,000 people, those are the mm-hmm. 400 that fly in from around the world and yeah. spend days together, you know, breaking bread and being in, in connection and, and loving on each other. Um, and we have for, you know, so many people, it's always, when are you going to do an event in Korea? When are you doing it in the UK? When are you doing it in Japan? Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, and so me and my business partner have been brainstorming on this for years and we finally figured out this way to do these regional events and we're going to, uh, so we're going to launch that over the next few months. So, you know, if you, if you go to miraclemorning.com, you can opt in and you can get, you know, get on my newsletter and get the free chapters of the book and a video training and an audio training and all these free bonuses. Um, and then, uh, and then, you know, and then we're going to send a survey out in the next few weeks that says, Hey, where do you live? Do you want to be part of these regional events? And they're going to be a really low cost way just to cover the cost. We're not looking to make a big profit. I just want to make it so that the Miracle Morning community can actually come together in all these locations. They've been begging for it for like years. And we finally figured out a way. We've trained over 100 facilitators that can go around the world and facilitate these events because obviously I can't beat them all, you know? Um, So, yeah, so that's that's what – so what's next is these regional events, the movies coming out, the Miracle Morning for Couples book. uh, I'm editing right now. That's coming out on Valentine's Day 2019. We have a lot of different stuff in the works, but, uh, but yeah, those are the big ones. Oh, my gosh. Well, you are totally knocking it out of the park, and I think you're – you're – you're hitting your mission, right? Like elevating the conscious in all these different ways. And just like you said, it snowballs other people and then they adapt, they adopt it and then they share it. And it's what a beautiful thing. Like, and from that seed of, I'm not sure anyone will read this to where it is today. Like get out of your own way and make your life, like just let your life unfold. What a beautiful journey. So Hell, tell everybody, like it's almost Christmas time. So for everybody you know, go out and get Hell's book. Where can they, where's the best place to get it, Hell? Uh, Amazon is probably the best place. I think you can, I think you can get it at Barnes and Noble. I don't know. We had some weird issue recently where I'm not sure if it's available at Barnes and Noble, but Amazon for sure. And you can get paperback, you can get Audible, you can get, you know, the Kindle, right? So I mean, whatever format you like, but Amazon is, uh, is the best place to get it. And I did always, uh, I, I think I haven't said this in the book, but I kind of joked, I said, the miracle morning makes every morning feel like Christmas. And when the first Christmas rolled around that the book came out, I'm like, this is the only book you could get somebody for Christmas that makes every day, every, every day feel, feel like, like Christmas. Christmas yeah, yeah, so. like in your first chapter. Right. And yeah. I have my beautiful copy, which hell assigned for me, which is amazing. So I'm going to throw out to our audience as well. Um, anyone who sees this video and shares this live stream we're going to pick from that group and we'll give away a copy of Hell's book. I'll send awesome. it to your home via Amazon. So share away. We'll run it, let's say, till the end of November. Let's share it. Let's continue with the snowball effect. So cool. Hell, thank you for joining us so much, taking time out of your uh, amazing day. And we wish you all the best in the future as you move forward. The whole Careers on Vacation, Cindy Williams team, Anything you need, you let us know. We're cheering for you, rooting for you, and everybody, go get this book. It's so it'll change your life, right? So thank you, Hal. Much thank love. You, Cindy. Thanks everybody for tuning in. Have a great day. We'll talk soon. Bye.